Hi, everyone. So you see this? You see these. These are new forms of computation that have been developed over the last three years or so. These are spaces formed from the interactions between different programs. They're interwoven systems of pure computations. Now, what do I mean by a, a pure computation? Well, let's take a Turing machine. We know who Alan Turing is. We know what a Turing machine is, right? Okay, so these are 10 different Turing machines. This is a space formed from the interactions between 10 different Turing machines. So Stephen Wolfram, my teammates, and I spend much of our time studying spaces such as these. And I'm totally amazed by them. I'm totally amazed by them. These are going to transform the way that we do science. They're going to allow us to unlock the full power of computational work in order to model our world and others, and in doing so, unlock the full value of science. You see, here's the thing about the relationship between computation and science. On the one hand, computation provides the ultimate formal means for understanding the world. The world is composed of processes, sequences of events that occur step by step according to some underlying rules. And that's exactly what a computation is. And in an abstract sense, natural processes themselves are computations. Really, computation is much more than just what your laptop does. It's a paradigm for understanding the natural machinery of this world. On the other hand, many computations, including those even with simple rules, are impossible to predict. You can't predict them. You don't know what they'll do without just running them and seeing what they do. But this suggests that many natural processes themselves are difficult to predict. And this presents a bit of a crisis, because the point of science is to predict things. So in my view, computation has presented both a blessing and a curse for science. On the one hand, it allows us to model the things that we understand and the things that we can predict. But on the other hand, it suggests the existence of a vast, dizzying landscape that we can barely grasp, in which science serves as a very narrow corridor. Well, that's been the conclusion for many years. That's what we have presumed to be the case. But then we made a breakthrough with these kinds of spaces. You see, as soon as you take many computations and you work with them together as systems, systems composed of underlying processes, you're able to extract much greater predictability from them. We can observe them, we can smooth them over, and we can merge them in different ways. And we can extract from them macro scale, aggregate, bulk properties that are very friendly for human understanding, unlike the underlying frenzied behavior of their constituent processes. And so now we're using these kinds of spaces to model many areas of applied science, economics, physics, uh, mathematics, evolutionary biology, and so on. But what's even more shocking is that we can use these spaces not only to model our world, but also others. You see, ultimately, ultimately, you can take a space that contains all computations. You could take every possible algorithm, every possible program, and run them all together in one single space. And we call this the Rouliad. The Rouliad is the space of all computational rules. And what's really beautiful about the Rouliad is not only does it contain all systems, all systems that correspond to our world, but also systems that correspond to nothing that we see in nature. But the Rouliad is also navigable. You see, with computers, we can actually explore the Rouliad. We can explore what we call Rouliad space. We can find systems and spaces that we find to be interesting. We can mine them, and we can use them for our own purposes. So, so to have the full richness, the full beauty of the full computational world descend upon ours for our benefit, and to probe the full depths of the Rouliad, these are the objectives that will inform the new chapter of science. And we're founding the Wolfram Institute to do precisely this. Now, I want to say a few things about some of the objectives that we have for the Wolfram Institute. We have very powerful scientific goals. It is our intention to transform science. But we also want to transform the way that institutions of science operate. And these are going to be greatly abetted by Web3 technologies. So I'd like to share with you some of our plans for doing that. So 
First, let me explain how we got here. There are two key factors that I believe have led to our success in making progress in studying the Rouliad into doing this new kind of science. And not the old new kind of science, but a new kind of science that involves uh, studying the spaces of all of these different programs together. So one is openness, and the second one is independence. So let me say something about openness. So we've been doing physics modeling for a number of years. We've started metamathematics modeling um, maybe about six months ago. And as we've done this research, we've live streamed many of our meetings. There have been meetings during which we've been successful, meetings during which we've been unsuccessful. But every, every step of the process um, that's been involved in our research is available for the public to follow. And the second thing is we archive all of our working materials. right? So people can follow the process of doing science, and they can use all of our code. This is what we've done so far. And we're going to greatly accelerate and intensify this open science practice with the Wolfram Institute through open science, community building, and Web3. So I'll walk you through a couple of the uh, approaches that we want to take with open science. I mean, the, really, the goal of open science is to bring new people in. We get new talent this way. We find new opportunities this way. And ultimately, the Rouliad is really for everyone. We want to find ways to bring people in and have them share that experience. Ultimately, the institute will serve as the epicenter of studying the Rouliad, but we want to build the scientific effort and have other people join. So first of all, we'll have a metaverse presence. So the institute will be in the metaverse. People will be able to visit the institute. They'll be able to sit in on the meetings, and they'll be able to interact with us. That is an opportunity that's rarely presented by other research institutes that are doing advanced science. You usually don't know what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. They usually have manicured presentations. But you'll actually be able to see what we're doing in real time. The next thing is NFTs for live discoveries. So we'll be issuing collectibles for you know, new findings that we make as we're exploring the rule yet. So we're going to be exploring real space. We're going to be diving into the space of all possible computations. We're going to find all kinds of you know, unexpected findings that we would never you know, anticipate being able to um, discover. And we want to be able to capture the uniqueness of those through NFTs. And finally, we're going to have a whole you know, reward mechanism for live stream participants. And we want to create actual pathways for you know, community live stream viewers to actual uh, research fellows within the institute. Now, I also want to say something about independence. So, so far, all the research that we've done on the Rouliad has taken place at Wolfram Research, with the main contributors being you know, employees of the research. And Stephen Wolfram has effectively been funding uh, all of the research himself. But this has meant that we haven't been dependent on NSF grants. We haven't been beholden to university pressures. We just follow the science. We investigate the core, obvious, gaping problems at the intersection of science and computation that no one else has the guts to really confront. And we develop whatever tools and methods we want. And the institute is going to be even more independent. So currently, we are fundraising from donors, and that process is uh, still very much underway. We're still interested in uh, finding people who are interested in supporting us during the initial push. And we're happy to say that so far, that's going quite well. But we also have further mechanisms that we intend to build and invent in order to make the institute itself self-sustaining and independent, and also accord the option and the opportunity of scientific independence to other people within a new, greater ecosystem of scientific institutions in Web3. So one of these is NFT publishing. So we, we're going to do for science what NFTs have already done for art. Um, I mean, one thing that greatly disturbs me is that scientists give away much of the value that they produce through science you know, in the form of articles that they give away to journals. They give them to journals for free, or they even pay to have them published in, say, open source journals. And this is a colossal forfeiture of value. So the first order of business is we're going to change scientific publication. We're going to massively improve it through computational essays. We're going to make it possible to access all the code that was used when someone does science. It should be embedded within the actual document itself. There shouldn't be confusion about the actual idea process that the scientists went through. And it should be possible to work with and edit these documents so that people can learn in a much more direct way. And this new value that's created will be captured by NFTs that are actually issued for the works. Um, the second thing is research tokenization and NeoGuild DAOs. So we're going to replace the grant funding process with new tokenization methods. Individuals or even groups that create you know, new scientific guilds should be able to issue their own tokens and monetize their own research so that they can be independent. 
And finally, metaversities, which will be peer-to-peer -peer apprenticeship organizations between experts and students. I think that it's a shame that students have to pay for education at all. I also think that the um, administrative uh, systems that we have at universities right now are entirely sclerotic and should be completely obsolesced and replaced. So metaversities are going to allow individuals who want to work with um, experts on particular areas to just work with them directly. I mean, ultimately, the purpose of universities is to allow for people to make a contribution to some history of ideas and for people to learn the history of ideas under the apprenticeship of someone else. It's entirely possible to capture the history of ideas in some field on a ledger and to issue idea tokens for new ideas that are created, such that when individuals work with some mentor and they produce a new idea, that ultimately that idea is just a new idea token that's added to a new lineage in a ledger-based um, system in Web3. And ultimately, these new inventions that we're making, they should make it possible for science to be able to capture the full value that it produces, but this should be able to extend beyond science to really anyone who has an idea that they want to share. We believe that science is the production of pure value through pure ideas, and with metaverse, with NFTs, with Web3 in general, it should be possible to lower that barrier between pure ideas and computational forms that have unique market value. So in sum, by having open science, by creating these new mechanisms and these new institutional features in order to capture the market value of science, we should be able to realize the full value of science, both computationally with the Ruliad, socially with community-based open science, and finally the economic value of science. This is something that we intend to initiate, and we hope that others will join us in transforming science, both in terms of the methods, but also in terms of the way that we build institutions in the future. Thank you very much.